Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. And then verse 13. Verse 13. Verse 1 through 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the son of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families by the house of their father. From thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, all the end time, all that entered into the host to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohat in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy thing. And when the camp set it forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering nail and cover the ark of testimony with it. Verse 13 reads, And they shall take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth thereon. I want to talk this morning about ashes on the altar. Ashes. Verse 8 and 9. It refers 
to our hypocrisy. It knows that if we say one thing and then do another, that God will not hear us when we pray to Him in times of trouble. Job 35, verse 12, 13 indicates that when we are lifted up in pride, when we find ourselves full of our sin, that God will not hear us or even regard what we say. That is, in a degree of serious. Those are friends who are living lives outside of God's will. Find that not only, not only, my friends, will their prayers not find their way to God, but that God will not, that God will get as far away from them as He can. Proverbs 15, 29 emphasizes this truth by making it plain that God hears those who are living according to his will, but stays far away from the unright. The Bible teaches us a man in Chronicles, a man in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, said that if my people, that's group that is called by my name. If that group would just humble themselves and if they would pray, seek my face, go ahead and yes, turn for their will be with you. The Lord did say they would hear from heaven and he would heal our land. This text this morning focuses on a description about an action of the altar of God were to be handled. The tabernacle of God was a portable tent that moved whenever the people broke in. There, my friends, were elaborate instructions given in this fourth chapter about the dismantling of the tabernacle and for the handling of the altar. Each one of these sons of Levi had a specific mission of special things that they were to carry, to move about, to do our own business. Among the detailed instructions were those relating to the handling of the ashes of the altar. Mm -hmm. Altars were places where believers made animal sacrifices to God. There were specific rules for handling the altar. Mm -hmm. Among the many rules were those that the fire of the altar be kept burning perpetually uh -huh. and that the ashes be removed regularly. The animal that was sacrificed represented a particular sin. The ashes were all that was left behind of that sin. The ashes were carefully removed from the altar, but not even the attendants were allowed to look at them. Ashes were never allowed to accumulate. The Levites arranged for the ashes to be carried away daily so that they would not suffocate the fire on the altar. The fire on the altar represented the, the presence of God. Ashes threatened to extinguish the fire. The ashes on the altar would never be thrown away. They were taken outside of the camp. 
mixed with water and used in purification ceremonies for those who were impure in some way. The application of the ashes indicated a purity restored. Oh, my friends, no attendant was to look at the ashes. A purple cloth was placed over the ashes by the priests so that the comatites who were in charge to empty them will not see them again. The ashes of the sacrifice were considered holy since they were what indicated God's acceptance and of a sin. Well, removal of the ashes was essential to maintain the flame on the altar of the Lord. Removing the ashes symbolized that sins once forgiven were never seen or heard of again. Well, whenever someone needed purification, the old ashes were mixed with water. They were applied and sprinkled upon him to signify that he had been restored. Well, in the New Testament, as you know, there is no animal sacrifice. Christ himself became our one-time sacrifice. We come to him on the altar of our heart and bring him our sin in a spirit of humility and repentance. We go and we sin no more. Those ashes, those sins are forgiven and covered with the proper robe of grace and will never be heard of again like the ashes in the wall was used to help others find restoration. The ashes of our experience in the form of our testimony and the form of life will also help others to find God and atonement for themselves. Well, Hebrews 9, 13 and 14 says that through sacrifice and goats and sprinkling ashes, believe the Lord found forgiveness. But for us, Christ is our sacrifice and our source of atonement. When we approach God in prayer, we do so with the sense of humility and a sense of repentance for our sins, because we are humble yes. and have repented. Yes. Christ is our sacrifice, yes. and God hears us when we pray. Yes. When I pray, we simply kneel before God uh -huh. and put ashes on the altar. Right. Well, our ashes. Many Many can remember a time when houses, especially those in the rural, and not only those in the rural, but I came to Kansas City in 1954. A man, a man, and they had a house here. A man who had wood burning stove. Many have been. I'm cutting wood and leading the flame of those old iron stones. Every farm must learn very quickly that emptying the ashes was just as important as feeding the fire for wood. After a long night of slow burning oak, the next morning, those big deeds filled with ashes that had to be removed 